Hi and welcome back to the channel. F1 Silly Season is in full swing. For those of you that don't know, Silly Season in F1 is when all the drivers across the grid as well as outside the grid are linked with moves for different teams. This is of course in relation to next year's season and next year's grid. Silly Season actually happens throughout the year but it ramps up during the summer break, which of course F1 is currently on. This is because no one's around to ask these questions about these links and obviously the moves that are currently in the news. So it makes sense of why teams actually announce drivers during this period. F1 is currently on a break Break and we'll be back at the end of August for the Spa Grand Prix. The first domino to fall to get the silly season underway was because of Sebastian Vettel. This is when Sebastian Vettel confirmed he'll be leaving at the end of this season to retire as he brings his incredible career to an end. I looked at his career in full in a previous video and I've linked that below if you haven't seen it already. Aston Martin then wasted no time in getting a replacement in for that seat. They did this in the form of Fernando Alonso and they replaced one multiple world champion with another. I've also looked at why Fernando and Aston made this move. I covered this in the previous video and I've linked that below if you've not seen that as well. But I'll go through each team in today's video and discuss their lineup for 2023 and what we could expect for the grid for 2023 as well as the mess of the Alpine and Priastri situation. For Mercedes it's quite simple, both the current drivers have contracts for next year and will be in the team for next season. George signed a multi-year deal when he initially joined the team and he is the future of the team and Mercedes will look to him for, to be their shining star. Lewis has a contract for 2023, however depending on how the car develops he may not actually try to take that as the car has been off the pace and really not improving that much in 2022. So he may still call it a day at the end of the season if the car is obviously isn't up there. But I really doubt this as he's always maintained he's at his best and he always wants to carry on so I do see him on the grid for 2023 beyond that year is a really anyone's guess and to see if he still has the hunger and the drive to obviously carry on and try hope to win an eighth world title that of course he was robbed of in 2021 Red Bull signed both their current drivers onto new contracts this year. Max signed the longest contract in F1 and will take him to the team at the end of 2028. I looked at the deal at the time and did a video on this as I felt Red Bull jumped the gun a bit and gave him a ridiculous amount of money to try and make him stay. I've linked that video below if you've not seen it before. Perez has been driving really good for the team during the first half of the season. He's been really close to Max and really challenging for the points. He got out of the way for Max in Spain and Baku for Max to win. I covered these races as well as team orders in the previous video again i've linked that video below if you've not seen it after of course he got out of the way red bull rewarded him with a two-year extension which will take him with the team to the end of 2024 since that extension however Checo has been really far away from max and fallen a lot behind him just like he was last year but it's been rumored this may be because of one of two reasons the first being the car is being developed to max's driving style so it isn't really suited to Checo and his driving style and he's finding it hard to get adjusted to obviously max's driving style the second rumor is that Checo is running a legal floor which Red Bull will run in Spa as part of a new directive that's going to come in place in Spa as part of the FIA's clampdown on flexi floors. But yeah, both of these are both rumours and we'll have to see in terms of, of course, if the flexi floor is the issue. As when we come to Spa, we'll see both cars struggle. But both drivers will be in the team for 2023. Charles Leclerc is Ferrari and he has one of the longest contracts and will be with the team to the end of 2025 even though he's probably regretting that decision with the issues he's been having this year but he will be with the team for 2023. Ferrari also signed up Carlos Sainz early this year on a two-year extension which will take him just like Perro to the end of 2024. However even though he was best of the rest last year in 2021 and did a great job for them last year he's really been off the pace this year and been behind Charles a lot of times during the 2022 season. He's only got one pole position and one win to his name compared to obviously his teammate who have a lot more. He's not been at the level that Charles has been all year round and has admitted that he's not 100% with the car and that he's been really struggling trying to get to grips with that car. He really needs to level up if he is ever to challenge for a title and show to the world that he's worthy of that seat. But for 2023 he will be alongside Charles to race for Ferrari. As mentioned at the start of this video, 
Aston confirmed Fernando Alonso as soon as the summer break started and of course Vettel retired. He will be alongside Stroll whose father of course owns the team. So it will be Alonso and Stroll for the 2023 season. Alonso as I mentioned in my Alonso video signed a multi-year deal so he should be with the team to at least the end of 2024. The team are really behind this year and on their five-year projection plan. They had a five-year plan two years ago to make their way back to the top and they really have work to do to try to do that. They need to work especially hard to make inroads into that plan and make their way back through the field especially if they want to fight for titles. Alpine have really been a mess since the summer break has started. As discussed in my Alonso video, Alpine had offered Alonso a one-year extension, but as Alonso wanted a multi-year deal, he went and moved to Aston. He saw the opportunity arise, of course, when Vettel retired, and it's been rumoured that Alpine only found out about the news when obviously it got announced. So it was a very much surprise to the team and Otmar Safna, the obviously team principal of Alpine. Otmar stated before the summer break that they've asked Alonso and he said he'll very much sign for that one year. So they were all shocked when obviously he got announced for Aston Martin. So once they got that confirmation obviously Alonso will move to Aston Alpine then jumped a gun a bit. They jumped ship too early and then confirmed Ocon will be alongside Priastri for 2023. Ocon had a contract for next year already, so no surprise there. But the issue was Priastri. Priastri is currently the reserve driver at Alpine and the next great young talent to come through the lower formulas. He's won all the lower formulas in his rookie season and doing very good and showing his pace in the lower formulas. After Alpine then confirmed Priastri, Priastri came out on Twitter and Instagram to state that he didn't sign a contract and that he would not be racing for the team in 2023. This was such a mess as the F1 community went crazy and Twitter went crazy. It's been rumoured that Alpine have a contract with Oscar Piastri for 2023 as this is why the tweet of Piastri's confirmation is still up to this day but Piastri is actually in talks with a McLaren to drive for 2023 and of course take Ricardo's seat and it's such a mess as of course we have this miscommunication and obviously Alpine think they have a contract with him where of course Piastri says that he doesn't. If this of course does happen Ricardo will lose his seat in McLaren even though he did state he has a contract for 2023 but of course as a Reported, Zach Brown, the CEO, stated there were mechanics in that obviously contract to break away. So we'll have to see what happens as this saga rumbles on throughout the summer break. Just like Charles, Norris is the future of McLaren and he signed a long-term deal with McLaren to take him to the end of 2025. There was rumours about the length but it was a multi-year deal. He's really been pushing that team forward last year as well as this year. He's the sole reason the team is where they are in terms of last year and this year and doing decently with a car that's obviously not that well. He's even managed to get a podium this year which really shows his talent in the car. So he will of course be with the team for next season. Now of course that second seat, as mentioned Ricardo's really been struggling this season and his time at McLaren Lynn last year as well this year has been poor and he has stated he has a contract for 2023 with the team however as mentioned Zach Brown said there was mechanics in that contract to break away throughout this season there's been reports of Ricardo's contract for next year and now it's even heightened with obviously this news about Piastri it looks like McLaren have agreed to sign Piastri for next year but this of course leaves Ricardo without a seat at the time of this recording it's been rumored that the McLaren contract with Piastri has been put to the FIA and they've obviously okayed it and they believe the contract with Alpine is not legitimate and that McLaren have let Ricardo know they intend to replace him with Piastri. Nothing has been confirmed as of now and of course this recording but things are really moving quickly in this whole saga and I expect an announcement obviously on Piastri fairly shortly. Personally I feel like Ricardo does still deserve to be in F1 and I'm really hoping he can go back to Alpine who of course was Renault when he was there last time as of course there will be a free seat now obviously with Piastri going to McLaren. We'll see obviously how this plays out and hopefully if he does go back he can find his mojo again but time will tell of course what happens and how this saga unfolds. Bottas signed a multi-year deal with Alfa Romeo when he signed his initial contract last year. This is one of the main reasons he moved to the team as he never got this at Mercedes. So he'll be driving for the team next year. The second seat isn't confirmed yet but I do believe Joe will still drive for the team. He's been really good this season and got up to speed relatively quickly during of course his rookie season. Also the fact that he brings good funding to the team really helps that solution which of course makes him very attractive to the team. No confirmation yet but that seat is likely to face competition from other drivers. The likes of Mick Schumacher and Theo Polche is actually in for that seat. But both good candidates to replace Joe if they obviously do. Williams confirmed Alex Albon for 2023 and beyond this week. He's had a great year so far and scored all the points for the team and had some good performance when he's come back to F1 this year. The team really like him and I'm happy he's got to show the world his talent finally, even though the car is towards the back of the grid. So he signed a contract for 2023 and beyond. Their second seat in Nicholas Latifi is really up for grabs and it looks like Latifi won't retain it and will be out of F1 next season. He's really been bad for the team throughout his time in F1. During his whole time in Williams, he's always been outqualified and outperformed by that teammate, whether of course that was Russell or Alex Albon. And let's not forget, Albon was out of 
F1 for one year as well. So it really goes to show how bad Latifi has been performing this year. Mercedes reserve driver Nick De Vries is in a shout for that seat, as well as Oxford Priyashri, who was named before as well. However, as I mentioned, Priyashri is actually a shoe in for McLaren, and he wouldn't go to Williams as they're more towards the back of the field. So it makes sense for him to stay at Alpine, obviously, or go to McLaren, which obviously has been reported. So Nick De Vries could be a good shout for that seat and that second seat at Williams. After Perez signed a two-year extension at the Red Bull team, this left Gasly without a shot for the top team again. He's then of course signed another contract for 2023 with the team as I believe he had nowhere else to go. There was no space for him throughout the grid so he stayed where he is. He's too quick for that team and I believe he needs a chance at a faster car. And maybe when it comes to 2024 he can have that chance. But time will tell when we get there. Sonoda was awarded a second season alongside Gasly this season but he even admitted himself he was surprised to get that second chance after a tough rookie season. The team has not confirmed him for 2023. 23 yet and I personally don't think if they will he's not really improved much this year and may lose that seat to other drivers Liam Lawson is pipped to take that seat for 2023 so was Alex Albon as well but of course Williams confirmed him for 2023 so Sonoda could be out of F1 for next season Kevin Magnussen was brought back to F1 after Haas fired Nikita Mazepin before of course the start of this season and he slotted back into the sport really good. He signed a multi-year deal which is of course beyond this year so he will have a drive for next season. He's been doing great since the start of the season and scoring points consistently and bringing good points home for the team. Mick Schumacher who of course is a Ferrari junior driver, his contract comes to an end at the end of 2022 and is looking to prove a contract extension beyond that this season or may have to move to another team with of course the main team being shot for at least two years in Ferrari. He's been struggling most of the year and only recently got some points and really understanding that car and getting it underneath him. Let's see if Haas really gives him an extension for next season but they may not do due to his inconsistency. There may be an opening at Williams as I mentioned and Haas might try to go for someone that comes with funding as they are a small team and need the funds. So that's all 10 teams done. Let me know down in the comments what you believe in terms of the 2023 grid and if you agree or disagree with some of my assumptions or predictions. But like I said all these rumours and driver suggestions are going to go throughout the whole summer and of course towards the back end of the season there's always going to be rumors and links with different teams and this is why it's called silly season make sure you click the subscribe button below for more f1 news analysis and opinion if you've liked the video click the like button below this will really help the youtube algorithm